Good morning, it's Jeannie here. And for those who don't know me, I'm a storyteller and I tell events of my life and I sell doTERRA essential oils and I do the angel cards for advice. And you can find my uh, cash app if you need to give me some advice, you need to give me a donation. And I am a home economist. And I always have something new to say every day. And I really don't know what I'm going to talk about because it's kind of like spur of the moment. I'm doing research for different people. And so right now I have like three things that I need to be doing. But I haven't been well for the past couple of weeks. So I'm kind of behind in my time. But today, I, I really want to talk about the ringing of the doorbell. Uh, for the past three nights, uh, my doorbell's been ringing. But I took my button off my front door and I put it on the bookshelf. So the wind or whatever can't ring it. But it's still ringing. And so last night when I was laying down to sleep, um, I was hearing things fall, and the doorbell was ringing. I, you know, I finally got to sleep. And, you know, I didn't go investigate the house. I, I have no pets that are going to knock anything over. I don't have a bird that's going to fly into the light fixture and knock it down. Uh, so it's me and me alone. So if something falls, it has to be my fault. But when I woke up this morning, there were things knocked over. And the light fixture in the kitchen, which is about four foot, had fallen down and knocked over some other things. Now, why did it fall? I didn't feel an earthquake or anything like that. Do we have earthquakes in Florida? I don't know. But what is this phenomenon of the doorbell ringing? I, in the beginning, as I had stated in other videos, I, I looked it up. And it said mechanical problems. And I don't find any mechanical problems. And then... Um, I went to YouTube and I got a dark side that said death was at my door and the devil was coming in. I, I think if I would listen to that lady on that video, it, maybe the devil would have walked in my door. You, you know, you have to, when you're looking for things, you have to use some common sense. Now, when Michael first died, they didn't turn off his phone, you know, and it wouldn't be the first time Michael ghosted me. He gets depressed and then he doesn't talk to anybody. So I was told he was dead. I was in shock. Now I think I'm in denial. So that means I'm making it through um, my um, grieving in the correct way. But what about this ringing of the doorbell? Um, so I looked it up. And it says like the angels are giving you six messages. Have you ever put anything into the universe and made a wish for something? And you said, universe, please give me a sign. Let me know if I'm making the right decision. Uh, uh, let me know if my finances are going to come back. You know, just asking for something and you're asking for this sign. And your doorbell rings. There's your sign. And it was the sign you were looking for. The incoming, it's entering into your life, what this wish you wished for.
so maybe I should back up and tell you. Doorbells have been around for a long time. It's um, back in the 19th century in, in Scotland, this guy installed the first totally, completely mechanical doorbell. And then, you know, the electric ones showed up late, earlier, later. Anyway, they showed up after the first doorbell. But there, there has always been doorbells, the pull ones, and they go back in time for a long time. So a, a, a doorbell is not a new thing. It's just got a better ring, and it's just a button, and it can be wireless. But, you know, in the big castles, the people would pull the bell, and that would let them know someone was at the door. And even back then, they would pull the big bell, and nobody would be there. So the stories I tell today <clears throat> maybe are myths and maybe are true. And... um so now that I kind of got that out of the way, the, the purpose of the bell is to let you know something is there. And the bells are connected to energy. I am energy. The spirit is energy. This is energy. And even if you talk to this water and, you know, tell it, oh, I love you and stuff, you change the way the water is. You can even taste, change the taste of water by talking to it. It's like a living organism. I'm going to talk about that one day. So I got to get off that subject because, boy, that gets deep. But anyway, energy flows. It, it, it flows in this necktie. Everything is energy. So, like I said, the first spiritual number one is that you got a sign that you were looking for something. And it's, it, you got your sign. It says, I'm here. Here I am. Now, number two is somebody's coming. Uh, and you go, duh, of course. I ordered a pizza. It's going to be here in 20 minutes and the doorbell is going to ring. But, you know, the, the purpose of knocking and doorbells is to announce their arrival. That's the purpose. But the spiritual meaning of the doorbell ringing is not, is li lit it's not as literal as the carries that carries the spirit. For example, if you hear the doorbell one day and months after that, you welcome an addition to your family. The baby gave you notice, hey, I'm coming. Or maybe the doorbell rings in the morning and nobody's there, but it spoils the surprise of somebody coming later in the afternoon because you're expecting somebody to come. Um, this phenomenon is like an early warning sign. No matter what or when the arrival will happen, the, the doorbell is, is warning you that somebody's coming. <laughs> so number three, the doorbell is telling you to pay attention. A lot of people find doorbells to be intrusive, especially when they're not expecting company at all. And they hear the doorbell and it's ringing frantically. You can expect only something terrible is about to happen. Oof, that's a good Kind of sad thought, isn't it? Some doorbell ding, 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 and something terrible is going to happen because when you go to the door and there's nobody there, you know, it could be a count encounter 
with uh, someone who thinks they're entitled or they're impatient or it's an unpleasant emergency. That, that, that's a lot of reasons for the doorbell to ring. But if you're the only one that hears it, on the hand, it could say, heads up, check the weather. It could rain. You may be having a terrible storm. Uh, you need to get to your battle stations. There is a disaster pending. And this could probably happen on the same day, and it, and it could happen other days. You know, you like your intuition, that doorbell rings, and, and you kind of know when you get to the door, there's nobody there. What, what is going on? What is going on? Um, it's your guard, it, it is your guardian angel using a more efficient way of getting your attention. So, when I stopped, when they turned off the phone for Michael and I could no longer send messages and I could, ne could no longer feel insecure about him being around, that's when my doorbell started ringing. And it's really freaked me out, especially last night and I get up this morning and find falling objects. And number four, the spirits are calling. It's not just humans who like to play the game of ding dong ditch. Uh, sometimes both the physical and the spiritual doorbell ring. So you need to give to the attention. And they're asking permission to enter. You don't need to stress yourself out and bring bad juju on yourself because there's solutions. Um, I, I have a salt lamp. Actually, I have two salt lamps. And I'm going to take one of them outside and put it by my door. As, as decoration. Or you can just spread salt around your door. Um, you can use protective charms or thing. You can call a priest to come in and bless your house. Um, you you can have you can burn sage and sweet grass. Put a little tobacco around your house. And, and, you know, this covers everything and protects it. Now, I'm feeling different grief for Michael than I felt for anybody else. And so with this number five reason is it's, uh, it's time for a new phase. Uh, I'm feeling stuck, um, and I'm just l letting the days pass one day after another. Could it be that Michael's coming and saying, hey, move on, move on. You've waited for me long enough. He's been telling me for years, you know, go out and have fun. And... Uh, I go to the beach and I have my fun, but I don't have manly fun. So, and he would tell me to do that too. The doorbell says, I'm issuing in a new phase of life for you. I know I'm making you confused now. 
it is time for something to happen or I should make something happen? And the answer is to both questions is yes. Something is happening and I need to make something happen. Um, my starting point is very difficult. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm growing spiritually or I'm just lost in the sense of time and, and the doorbell is shaking things up. Uh, now I have to think why things are falling down. But it is time for me to move on and I, I don't know when I'm going to make these new challenges but it is time. Number six, it's time to face the world. The world is ringing my doorbell and asking me if I want to come out and play. And I need to go out and play. You know, I feel safe in my environment, but I stay confused too. And is the doorbell really giving me an invitation to, to leave my home and go out and play? So last night I decided I probably would take the advice of leaving my house and going out. Um, I have some things I have to take care of, but then I think I'm going to pop on a plane and I'm going to go to Austin and check on my family there because they're having difficulties. And then I've asked my son to travel with me to Georgia to check on my other son. And uh, But I, I'll tell you, this... What is this telling me to do? It, uh, I am a homebody and I am caught up in devices and the social media and the streaming services. And if this Delaware Bell is telling me to leave aside them for a bit and go out, in the sun and breathe some of the air, or maybe even take a walk barefoot in the grass. I think I should do this. And uh, I will do it. But at the moment, I feel safer in my home. So, if you have any thoughts about the doorbell, you know, it's more natural than supernatural, they say. I don't know. The doorbells give me a signal. And I have to process all of these things I'm going through. And I have to I have to be paying attention. Cause you know this the spirit works in mysterious ways. And I have really been devastated by the loss of Michael. So, I hope you understand my explanation of, of the door. It's a sign to something you ask for. Someone's coming. Um,
You need to pay attention. Things, you know, things are happening all around you. And, and sometimes when you get distracted, you, you really need to pay attention a lot. What was number? Number three was pay attention. Number four was the spirits are calling. If you like me, you believe in spirits. And, and we need to be open to hear what they have to say. Sometimes we, we get advice. And um, as for the salt at the threshold, you know, it's it said that a spirit knocks on the door. And people knock on the door. They wait for you to ask them to enter. And so I, I don't think my ringing doorbell is an evil thing. I think it's part of my grieving, and I think it's part of my guardian angel helping me. And number five, and this is definitely true of the ringing doorbell, it's time for me to start my new life without Michael. I don't know how to do it because Michael has always been around for so long. He always gave me that guidance that I needed, the sureness in his word. No, we weren't together a lot of the time that, that this relationship was going on, but it was a very binding relationship, a very strong relationship. Sometimes I just think, Michael, I need to talk to you. And the phone would ring, and there he was. And the sixth one was, it is time for me to get up and face the world and tell you the truth. It scares me. Uh, I don't have my youth anymore. And some things just come harder now than they used to. But I really need to go out and play. And I think they're having church in the park this Sunday. So I, I need to go to the church, the park. I hope they're not planning it after I get on the airplane. But anyway, life is great. And... I appreciate and I love the fact that I can share with you my innermost feelings even when I pull in the wrong words and I say it in the wrong contents. Like in my last video, I said something that didn't really make sense to me because uh, I was protecting my daughter, but she deceived me. Uh, where I thought I was doing a great job and she was deceiving me. And I, I don't feel like the door is deceiving, the doorbell is deceiving me. I, I think it's giving me the signals that I need to start a new phase in my life and to pay attention to things that are going on around in my world. And I gotta get up and I, I gotta stop being sick. I've been sick now for two weeks. You can still hear the scratchiness in my voice. So, do I don't have, I do have, okay, you can sign off now and just push that button to fast forward it because it is really time for me to sing my song. And, if you're going to sign off, farewell, and I love you. Would you lay with me in a field of stone? If my needs were strong, would you lay with me? Should my lips grow dry, would you wet them, dear? 
In the midnight hour, if my lips were dry, would you go away to a far another land? Walk a thousand miles through the burning sand. Wipe the blood away from my dying hand. If I give myself to you, would you bathe with me in the stream of life? When the moon is full, would you bathe with me? Would you still love me? When I'm down and out in my time of trial, would you stand by me? Would you go away to another land? Walk a thousand miles through the burning sand. Wipe the blood away from my dying hand. If I give myself to you, would you lay with me in a field of stone? Which my, should my lips go dry? Would you wet them, dear? Would you wet them, dear, in the stream of life? Love you. God bless you. Till the next time.